The next step is the plan is to take the geometry shape that we have in Rhino, and in this case it could be either something like this, it could be something like that, it could be any number of these things right, that we have, and map them onto the surface. But not only map them on there, but we want to be able to have them adjust based on the number of divisions on the surface. And if we manipulate the surface shape, we want them to sort of follow the contour of them as well. And so we need a couple more pieces to accomplish that. The next piece I guess we could jump into here is we need this surface box. And what this is going to do is basically it's going to let us create some depth on our surface, right? So we can get to this from transform tab and then go to the morph category and then when you click here on the black part to extend it you should be able to see surface box right so bring it in and now we have it available now for the surface box because we want the geometry pattern pieces to have a certain depth there is a height associated with this box that we need and we currently don't have a slider for that so we're going to create another slider so we're going to take this one copy paste a new slider and then we can wire this one to the height of the box so this one's going to give us sort of that depth that we need then to complete this box what we need are a couple things we need the surface we can kind of see the surface it's going to go to that right that's sort of what it takes, right? Because we have this sort of surface box, so we need a surface. And then, last but not least, it's asking us for a domain, basically a parameter that's going to define what that is. And that's going to be defined by this definition here that's dividing our surface. So we're going to connect this result into that domain. And you can kind of see what we had before, right? We created this sort of temporary surface. Now we're getting some geometry, right? And you can see the height, how it can control the height there. Uh, the UV count can be controlled there and there. Right? And so we created basically a way to take a surface, extrude it, and divide it up however we want parametrically. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But we're still not done yet, right? We need one more piece. We want to take these pattern shapes that I created that we want to explore, we want to put those onto each one of those cells. And so in order to do that, then we need a box morph. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to take those shapes and map them onto that volume of geometry. And depending on what that base surface does, those things are going to follow shapes. So they're always going to morph along with the surface, however complex it is. And in order to do that, then we need to pull this definition down here, down this little node. So we'll get that from uh, transform. We'll go to morph. And it's right here, it's called box morph. And so we'll grab that one and we'll put it down below. And actually I'm just gonna grab all these and just kind of scooch them down a little bit here so we have room. We have, this defines our surface and then these two up here define our geometry pieces. Now we need the time together. So I'm gonna take my geometry node. I don't have any associated geometry with it yet, but I will. I'm gonna connect my geometry here to the geometry that the box force needs, right, geometry. I'm also going to tie it into the reference because that'll be my reference and geometry. And last but not least, I'm gonna tie in my surface into its target, right? So those two will then be together. So the geometry is gonna tie into that surface. All right, now I don't have any geometry associated with here. I'm gonna hold on to that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick different surface which I have right here. So let me hide this. Just hide those. Okay. So, all right. So for surface, I'm just going to associate the actual surface that I need. So here's the screen border and here's the screen area. So for surface, I'm going to highlight that node, right click, set one surface, and pick my surface and I have my divisions, right? So that's where my height comes into play. My UV count comes into play. It's all working pretty well. And last but not least, then I'm gonna pick, you know what, let me just grab this ring for now. I'm just gonna move it out of the way here just so it's on its own. Let me just use that as geometry. So if I click on geometry, right click on it, 
and say set one geometry pick on that ring and let's take a look and see what it does pretty cool so I can click on my surface I'm just gonna hide the surface for now so you guys can get the full and you can manipulate the sliders and kind of play with it and see the different results that you get and you can kind of see how that geometry morphs based on my controls so it's pretty cool. I figure it's kind of a nice way to tie. It leaves it open to a lot of design options to create a pattern. There's a lot of shapes here that you can explore. So it's very easy. If you want to swap things out, you can just click on geometry, say set one geometry, pick a different one, and see what kind of results you get, which is kind of cool. And if there's one that you like, you can just bake it. And then there it is. So you can take that geometry. So it's pretty cool in that regards. And so what's nice about this definition, obviously, is not that it just works on flat surfaces. I think what's cool is that it actually works on curved surfaces. And so one of the things that I did then over here is what if that surface had some curvature to it? And what would this look like? And how would that behave? And so I took that frame area that we had. I basically created just a perimeter here of that with these lines just so being a little curved, right? So you can kind of see they're a little bit offset. And then created this surface from those lines. So I mean, it's simply just to kind of give you a quick idea. I went surface, and then I believe I did surface from edges, and then created it that way. So that's one way to do it. I mean, you could do surface from network of curves, my bad. Hit OK, and then you have that, right? So it's sort of how I created that surface. Now, what's cool about this is, and this is sort of where, to me, there's a lot of potential and a lot of fun in Rhino and Grasshopper. We'll use our new definition. If I pick this as a surface, so let's say surface, right click, set one surface, pick this curved surface, you can see how those components are now mapped onto that, right? And they conform to the shape. And what's cool is then you could also take the surface itself. And if you make the points visible that make up this curve, you can start manipulating those points. So I can grab that point and that point and let's just to make sure this point. And I can start moving those. Create a different kind of surface. And my objects on that screen are going to stay with it, regardless of what I do to that surface. And I can start really manipulating this thing in a lot of different, really fun ways. So I thought that was kind of a good sort of exercise to kind of show you guys the fun things that we can do here. And you know, the beauty of things like this is it's actually a really simple definition, but you could see a lot of applications for it, right? and you don't have to get super, super complex. And by no means, personally speaking, I'm not an expert in Grasshopper and Rhino, but I know enough that when I see an opportunity to really create something unique out of it, you know, I take time to explore it and create something that is useful, right? And, you know, geometry-wise, I think to me, one of the best features in Rhino is being able to manipulate this geometry like this. You know, and the nice thing about it is being able to be precise, because you can control these points snap them into place with other geometries, start creating some pretty unique shapes.